Well, everybody, welcome to part two, uh, part one of the requirements of becoming a certified management accountant. My name is Bennett Tchaikovsky, also known as the accounting professor. So my disclaimer and copyright notice, the information and opinions in this presentation are those of the author only and not the author's employers or affiliated organizations, including, but not limited to Irvine Valley College and the South Orange County Community College District. Um, the presentation is for educational purposes only and does not constitute any legal or accounting advice whatsoever. The pricing here is shown as of March 26, 2023, and this includes member discounts. Okay, so we're doing this multi-part video series, and I was kind of inspired by the CMA Exam Academy uh, to go through and do this. I actually had some access to Becker CPA review materials before, which I'll go through in the next video, uh, but just we're going to go through and what does it take to become a CMA? So the requirements to become a CMA is you have to have an active membership in the Institute of Management Accountants. So this is a actually, believe it or not, I am very well familiar with this organization because I actually gave an ethics presentation a few years back to members of the IMA, and I think this was pre-COVID. So you have to, so the IMA in Orange County, um, great organization, um, and it's really, if you're a student or if you're looking for networking opportunities, this can be a great place to do it. They generally have a dinner or other type of thing that's happening. They invite other professionals and you basically watch a presentation or you it's somebody who's actually live presenting. And then after the fact, you'll have a chance to go through and do some networking. So have to be and have an active membership in the Institute of Management Accountants. The next one is you got to go through and pay the exam fees, which I'll break down in a moment. You have to satisfy the education qualification, satisfy the work experience qualification, complete all required examination parts, and then you have to comply with the IMA statement of professional practice. Now, one of the other things that's kind of cool is that there is a the, the IMA basically comes out with the CMA handbook. And this is actually a great, this is really where I'm getting all of the different information from that I am going through and kind of sharing with you. Uh, this is really their material. I'm just basically putting it in a place where you get to watch it on a uh, fun uh, video side of it, right? Okay, so let's go through over here. So signing up for membership in the IMA. If you're a student, this is by far the very best deal. Now, in terms of what defines a student, I'm assuming it's a full-time student. Uh, but the student membership is $45 for one year, $90 for another year, for two years. Now, if you're a student, this is actually, again, this is a great organization to belong to, at least in Orange County, because I know they do events pretty frequently. If you're interested in events that are going on with the IMA and their Orange County chapter, I'm more than happy to forward your information on to uh, the individuals that run it. So uh, for myself, I joined the IMA. And I did this on an academic membership uh, because I teach accounting at Irvine Valley College. If I was a professional, the cost would be $275. So when you're going through and, and going through and doing this, um, you'll establish an account basically over here with the IMA. Now, what's kind of interesting is you see over here. I believe that these are basically, these are like seeming, these are the full, these are the prices that I was just going through and showing you. Over here though, when we kind of get to the next fee, so you've got right over here, you sign up to become a member. Once you sign up for a member, then all of a sudden your, your candidate package pricing basically will drop. Uh, the per for the professional, it's basically for every tier, it seems like it's $210. So when I went through, so you pay the IMA fee, then you have to basically pay this fee, which is essentially is an entrance fee. So when I go through and look at this over here, and because I'm a member of the, because I'm a member, I'm eligible for savings, right? So I'm automatically getting this 70 bucks off. So this is why it pays, you know, by myself, by joining the IMA, I was able to go through and save $70 on this part of it right over here. So what I'm looking for right over here, so it's basically going to be 210 bucks. Uh, I'm assuming it's the same for the other ones. 
Uh, but you, this is again something you'll have to kind of go through and check. So I uh, and this includes the CMA support package, performance feedback, reports, review of educational experience credentials. So it's really a kind of a processing fee for your application. So initial IMA fee, $210 entrance fee to the exam. Now for the exam pricing, right? This is where it gets, this is where you start really kind of looking at the, at the member benefits in terms of being at, being a member of the IMA. Because when I come over here on this very first part of the exam, uh, my price was basically 345 bucks. And basically because I'm a member, I save $115 on this part. So again, my membership is already starting to kind of pay for itself. This is basically for part one. Let's kind of go back over here and look at my cart. And let's take a look at part two. I don't think part two is discounted, but let's just kind of go through and check it out. Um, and this is also showing me $115 member savings. So again, it pays to be a member. Um, so, so when you go through and do it, so let's kind of go through back and do this again, become a member of the IMA then I'm going to have to go through and pay an entrance fee to be able to sit for the exam. The CMA exam is in two parts. You have to take it within the two month window. You have to take it between September and October, May and June. And I think the other one is January and February. I, and there we'll talk a little bit more about the exam parts. I'm going to do a separate video on that, but we're just kind of talking here about the pricing. So, I'm going to spend 210, 345. And now when we kind of look at this, if you, again, if you're a member, this is what it looks like. So as a professional, and this is before the cost of a review course, it's going to be 1,175. If you're a student, it's going to be 945. If you're going to be an academic, it's going to be 1,050. I strongly recommend for you in terms of doing this, sign up for your membership and then wait a little bit of time, like wait a day because then you'll start seeing basically the discounts kind of coming through and those discounts are absolutely substantial. So something to kind of think about. So my total cost, I already paid the 150. So another 900 bucks, I could essentially go through, sign up to sit for the CMA exam. And then I would be going through and taking those two parts. The materials have indicated to me that it's going to be done. You, you take the tests at a Prometric testing center. Uh, the CMA part one is four hours. CMA part two is four hours. But you're going to take these at a Prometric testing center. I do not know if the Prometric fees are included in this. I'm assuming that they are. But if they're not, I'll try to make a video later on and kind of go through and update you on that. Let's talk about the educational qualification. And if you kind of look back at my very first video, uh, this is basically something that uh, to me is, uh, you know, this is also like something that's not as necessarily challenging to complete. So if you have a bachelor's degree from an accredited college or university, it does not seem to have to be in any particular major. Note that the educational requirements to become a certified public accountant are much more intensive. You have to have 24 semester units of accounting, 24 semester units of business subjects, 20 semester units of accounting study, and 10, minute, 10 semester units of ethics studies. So for the education qualification, if you want to become a CMA, you just need a bachelor's degree from an accredited college or university. Or you can have a professional certification. So if you're a certified fraud examiner, certified treasury professional, certified internal auditor or a chartered financial analyst, those will and it, those will basically count as part of the education. Now, again, why isn't CPA listed on here? Because to become a CPA, you have to have a bachelor's degree. So that's really where you're kind of, well, why isn't CPA here as well? Because if you have a bachelor's degree, it's pretty much the same thing. So we've got the education qualification and now the experience qualification. And this is pretty broad. So we, I need to have two continuous years, 40 hours a week, a professional experience in management accounting or financial management. Now, this is what I'm going to kind of go through and do is I'm going to have like, when I look at this preparation of financial statements, financial planning and analysis, monthly, quarterly, and year and close, auditing, 
forensic accounting, budget preparation and reporting, managing general ledger and balance sheets, forecasting, company investment, decision making, corporate financial management, cost accounting and analysis, risk evaluation. So it's basically two continuous years in this area. Um, so again, uh, teaching management or accounting or financial at the college university level. So this is probably something where uh, I've, I've been definitely been teaching management accounting. Uh, but again, I'm going to kind of reach out to the Institute of Management Accountants and just kind of make sure that I've got that covered. Because if I had to take another job other than what I'm doing right now, that probably wouldn't be that pleasant. So they want you to have like some kind of more senior level type of experience. Obviously, if you're an auditor, this can right over here, auditing internal, ex external or internal, this can definitely go through and qualify. Now, what doesn't qualify over here? So employment requiring the occasional account application of management accounting principles, such as computer operations, sales and marketing, manufacturing, engineering, personnel, and general management will not satisfy this requirement. Internships and trainee clerical or non-technical positions do not provide appropriate experience to fulfill this requirement. So they really want you to have two years. And if you kind of think about it, why the IMA is doing this, by having the requirement of a bachelor's or another certification, by having the two years of work experience, this is actually more than what you need to become a CPA. This is actually good because it's actually kind of going through and lending more credence to the becoming a CMA. And let me just kind of go through really quickly and just try to find one part for you talking about the. So this is just a little bit more. You can find this information in the handbook. And it kind of says over here on a random basis, information provided on the work experience form will be verified by the ICMA. You'll be notified if your form has been selected for verification. So again, this is where I'm pulling all the information from on the PowerPoint slides that I'm basically sharing with you. So, and we're gonna talk now about the CMA exam. I'm gonna make two separate videos that kind of talk a little bit more so you can see what a CMA review course looks like. But part one covers financial planning, performance and analytics. It is four total hours. You have a hundred multiple choice questions, which I'm assuming you have three hours to complete. And then you've got two 30 minute essays. Now, the essays only appear once you've completed the multiple choice questions. You have to get at least 50% of the multiple choice questions correct in order to go through and to see the essays. Essays are graded offline, but you don't need, you don't need to pass both sections, meaning you could probably get a higher score on one versus another, and that could actually be what could kind of get you there. If you look at the testing windows that they're doing, so they're basically taking two months to kind of go through and grade the exams, which is actually kind of impressive if they're kind of going through and hand grading them. There was also some other parts of this over here too, which was you'll not receive immediate pass fail results because the essay questions will be graded offline. This is a time-consuming and labor-intensive process, and in order to assure consistency, accuracy, and fairness, all papers are graded at the same time. Sample grading is performed first to ensure all, all, all alternative solutions have been accounted for. Reviewers check the grading throughout the grading process. Once the grading is completed, there's an additional review of papers on the borderline and passing. The scores for the multiple choice section will be added to the scores of the essay section for a total weighted score of pass-fail reflected in a scaled score for the entire part. A candidates are not required to pass both sections. The total score determines pass-fail status. Exam results will be emailed and posted to your online profile approximately six weeks from the end month in which you tested. So again, they're taking their time. This is great. And I really kind of like the fact that they're going through over here and looking at basically to make sure that if they looked at every single alternative solution. So that's basically for the exam. Uh, CPA exam administration, you have to complete both tests within one of these windows. At a Prometric Testing Center, this is where the CPA exam is administrated, uh, where they administrate the C uh, CPA exam, where they also, if you want to become an enrolled agent, this is where they do the special enrolled agents examination. Now, once you've completed the CMA exam, you need to complete 30 hours each year, uh, two hours um, in the area of ethics. So you basically need to do 30 hours of continuing professional education. 
for myself, this isn't as a, really that big of a deal because for the CPA exam, I pretty much to be kind of maintain my CPA license. I have to kind of do the same thing. And then you have to basically go through and pay the annual fee. So over here, uh, this is their ethics statement. And if we kind of look at this over here, the statement of ethical professional practice, I'll basically, again, put a link to this so you can kind of go through and take a look. But talking about confidentiality, integrity, credibility, resolving ethical issues. So, and they have an IMA helpline. So again, this is something that's really helpful basically for their members. So uh, I want to thank you for joining me here today on this part one of my video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to me at 1812cpa at gmail.com. And I will see you on the next video. Have a great day.